sometimes when we're done with a normal Bible study with friends, the discussion continues on. And we had a wonderful discussion about the idea of eternal security or once saved, always saved. And this issue of having confidence in our salvation as believers. And we had a great conversation with Sherry Mangrum and Sherry gave us permission to continue the recording and to share it with you. So this is just between friends about the confidence we can have in our salvation. So stay tuned. So you stand on the statement of once saved, always saved? Yeah. Okay. And the reason is that our salvation isn't based upon what we do. It's based upon God's plan for us. And all we do when we accept Christ is just say, that's for me. If a man leaves the bar, goes down to the church, comes up, confesses, leaves the church, goes back to the bar, and just lives his life like he has been, doesn't change at all, you believe that he's sealed. Yes, but. The gospel is, is Savior and Lord. And if he goes through the motions and even prays, but he's not interested in living for the Lord. So there's no fruit. There's no, remember the verse that says that you will know them by their fruit. So if there's no fruit in their life at all, they don't do anything. Now, one of two things is happening. And we are not to judge that person all we can judge is yeah. what he's done now yeah but let's say he became a christian he really by faith asked christ into his life he becomes a child of god if he now slips back into his old ways what is god going to do with his child he's going to reprimand him he's going to discipline him remember god god disciplines those he loves that person all of a sudden is going to have God in his life crunching him to his knees. Heard people actually say that this Christian life is hard. I didn't have any of these difficulties when I wasn't a Christian. Being a Christian is a lot harder than not being a Christian. And that's because God is in your life and disciplining you to grow you to be a solid believer. So if they went left the bar, they went out, they went to a church, they heard a message and they they repented, accepted Christ and really meant it, okay? And even didn't follow the Lord yet, but just accepted Christ and and really meant it. God, the Holy Spirit is going to come into them and he is going to work on them to discipline them to get them into a right relationship. But I believe they're saved. And the reason for that is, for example, the, the robber on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. He accepted Christ. And we don't know how he changed in his living. His life didn't change by any actions we can look at. But where was he going to be that night? Jesus said, tonight you're going to be with me in paradise. So it wasn't, his, it wasn't how his life changed. It was the decision. Okay. Uh, let's say I don't go to church, I don't read my Bible, I don't do anything, but I would I really made a decision. Well, that's between you and God. But you're okay. gonna have to stand before God. Remember the guy in First Corinthians that he lived a life of unrighteousness, and yet he was saved, but by fire, and he all he had to offer back to the Lord was ashes, because all of everything he did was worthless. He had no riches. He had no crowns to give back to the Lord. But he, it says clearly, he was saved, but by fire. So from my perspective, I can't say once you're saved, you're always saved. Because I don't, I can't tell if you're saved except by your works. Now, even yeah. there, your works could be, you could be faking it. So I don't know. I can assume 
that you're a Christian because of your fruit and say, as a believer, that's great. I'm a believer and I know I'm saved because once I'm saved, I'm always saved in all these verses about being you saved at a lap. So the purpose is not to judge if you are saved. The purpose is to judge if I am saved. Okay. You have to judge if you're saved. Okay. The only way I can do that is to give you the gospel message and the gospel truth and the doctrine that says if you're saved, if you have accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, you are eternally saved. I believe that absolutely. Okay. But I can't say in an inst instant, oh, that guy is was saved and he lost it. If he lost it, First John says that if somebody was with us and is no longer with us, he was never with us in the first place. If I've asked myself the question, did you really accept Christ as your Savior and Lord? Have you turned your life over to Christ? Then no matter what happens and no matter what mistakes I make and screw up and sins I commit, I am saved and I'll be eternally saved. I can't lose that salvation. Now, I can't say to, to for anybody else because I can't see in your heart whether you really made a decision. All I can say is doctrine says if you made a decision, a heartfelt decision, then you're saved and you're saved eternally. Gotcha. You have eternal security because the doctrine says if you did that. Now, you have to ask yourself the question. I've met with guys who are miserable and they're weeping. There's no joy. There's no nothing. And I say, you know what it sounds like to me? And they go, what? I said, sounds like you're not a Christian. And they go, what? I went down in church in fifth grade. Yeah. And here's my response is, okay, you have to examine your heart. And you have to ask yourself the question, when you went down in fifth grade, why did you go down? Did you go down to really ask Christ to take control of your life, to be Lord of your life, and thank him for dying for every sin in your life. We could do that. The point taken there. We could steal. We could kill. We could commit adultery. We could commit any sin as a Christian. Okay, but then God is going to move on us. If we're really Christian, God is going to move on us and convict us of that sin. And he may use circumstances. He may drive us to our knees physically. We may get a disease. It could be anything. But God is going to get the attention of his child. Yes. And that attention may be a good spanking. For the purpose of not just punishment, but for the purpose of getting that person to repent and say, oh, man, that was a sin. And it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. <clears throat> so we are capable of sinner, sinning. And sinning doesn't make the fact that I'm no longer a Christian because I sin. Because even our own sin can't separate us from the love of God. But what we're doing when we go into sin and we don't confess it, we're opening ourselves up to our dad. Mm. Give us a good spanking. Now, if you're a dad... And your child or a mom and your child flagrantly disobey you. You say, don't do that. And they do it anyway. And you say, no, look, that's not good to do. I'm telling you, don't do that. And you give them a little swat, right? And if they look you in the eye and do it anyway, mm -hmm. next thing you do is maybe a little bit harder swat. You might explain things a little bit more. And then you give them a little bit harder swat. And if they flat out absolutely disregard you and do it anyway now it's time for some real punishment i might give them a real spanking and i might say you're in your room grounded for the next week so the more we resist our father the more he puts that discipline upon us because he it loves gets, us it, and he wants it, us to get back he wants us to get back into fellowship the intensity keeps ratcheting up yep. now he okay. doesn't do that with non-christians because okay. non-Christians 
who are who's the father of a non-christian satan satan is so until that person responds so all of god's focus to a non-christian is to get them to hear the gospel and respond to the holy spirit saying you need a savior you're a sinner you need a savior that's the total focus so he does he's not punishing them for sin because they're they're children of unrighteousness but once they become a Christian, once they hear the gospel and respond, remember that verse? We just read that verse in Ephesians. You yeah. hear the gospel and accepted Christ. Now you're a child. You're no longer children of the devil. Now you've been born again and you're in Christ. Now your behavior is a thing the father pays attention to. Hello? Day to day. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect. Now, yeah. so uh, the trouble we have when we're talking about eternal security is we look at other people. And we look at people who go to church that don't have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. There are people who worship but don't have a relationship with Jesus. There are people yeah. that do good works that don't have a relationship with Jesus. We have to be careful not to look at them and try to decide if they're Christians or not. Yeah, that's not for me. Yeah. I got but enough for, to worry about with my own self. Right, and for me okay, to say, okay, I became a Christian. I know yeah, I became a Christian yeah, because I accepted Christ as my Savior. I turned my life over to him as Lord and said, help me grow. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, did I blow it just now? Yeah, I did. So, what am I supposed to do? The scripture says, good doctrine says, I need to confess. And the word confess just means agree with. Yeah. So, I need to say, hey, Father, that was a sin that I just did. Yes. You got to help me resist that. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That you're going to make a way of escape every time Satan tries to get me to do that again. So, now I have to excess that the way of escape you give me now i did it again now does that mean i'm not a christian no it means the father still has some work to do and that work could be a good spanking eternal security is once you've accepted christ as your savior and you're born again you're born you're adopted and you're married into the family of god all you can't be unborn and you can't be unadopted because that's up to God. And technically, you can't divorce God. So he wants to give us an example of the fact that once you're a Christian, you're in the family. Cool. You have a guarantee and the Holy Spirit is in you as a pledge. Now, if you decide to go off and live a, a, a sinful life, boy, just be ready because God is going to, make your life a misery to try to drive you to your knees to get you to to repent not salvation wise but repent to my actions yeah so it's really for self-examination and self-assurance that once you're saved you're always saved that's for you to understand you are spiritually secure and once you're a christian you're always a christian no matter what trials come at you, no matter what Satan says. So I look at eternal security as an assurance to my heart that I can have a confidence that no matter what I've done, no matter what I've screwed up, I, I don't lose my salvation. Right. Now, are there people who come to church and pretend to be Christian, and then later go, ah, this is, I'm out of here. Of course there are. And you say, oh, there, they lost their salvation. No, because there are so many verses that say, once you're saved, you're always saved. So I can't look into their heart. If they left, First John says, if they left, they were never really of us. And I don't have a way of judging their heart, but I have a way of judging my heart. Yes. See, so eternal security is really an issue of self-examination and self-confidence.
Now, when you teach it as doctrine, you don't want to say you have eternal security mm -hmm. because you don't know if that person is really a Christian or not. What you need to do is say, doctrine says, if yeah. you're a believer, you have eternal security. Yeah. Once you're a Christian, so now it's up to you. Are you really a Christian? Have you accepted Christ as Savior and Lord? That's the rest of the, in fact, that's what we were talking about last night of how the gospel has gotten us through cancer is, well, part of the gospel is Christ died for our sins and rose to give us the promise of eternal life. But the rest of the gospel we had to learn in this idea of trusting him as Lord of our life and not getting up in the morning and telling him what you're going to do that day, but getting up in the morning and say, your boss, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. That's lordship. And that's really accepting Christ. If somebody came to me and said, I accepted Christ, I don't want Jesus telling me what to do. Now, I'm going to assume from that attitude that he needs the lordship of Christ in his life, or he's not really a Christian. Because what makes you a Christian is not walking down and saying, Jesus is Lord. In fact, in Matthew, Jesus said, many people call me Lord, but they don't obey the Father's commandment. Yeah. So they're not believers. So it's this idea of a, per a person accepting Christ and accepting him as Lord. All I can say is, did I accept Christ as my Savior and my Lord? Yes. Now, when I first accepted Christ, I didn't accept him as Savior and Lord because I didn't understand what Lordship was all about. So I, that, I think that salvation is really a two-step thing. Mm. It's not just praying a prayer and saying, okay, we're done. It's not praying a prayer and getting baptized. It's praying a prayer and making the decision to have Jesus be Lord of your life. Deciding to grow in to that's right what he's offering you because you yes. if you look at the way Jesus calls his guys, it's not believe in me, it's follow me. Okay, so it's he basically says, I died for your sins. Okay, but are you gonna follow me? Are you gonna take up your cross and follow me? Are you going to obey me as Lord of your life? That is the component that finishes out. You come to a conclusion that you're a sinner and you need a savior. Great. And you pray that genuinely. Great. But Jesus said, you're not a disciple unless you obey me. And so there's a mystery there of two parts of being a full Christian. I don't know. And if you accept Christ as Savior, but you do not want to accept him as Lord. And I think one of the first things he does to a new believer when he says, I've accepted Christ as Savior. I think God immediately starts to work on, yeah, but am I Lord in your life? And mm. let's ask some questions. Did you accept Christ as your Savior? Yes, I did. You know that he died for your sins. Yes, I did. And he has, he rose from the dead, so he has a promise of eternal life for you. Yes, I know that. Okay. Has he affected your life because of his lordship? Has he told you to do something you didn't want to do, and you did it because he's lord? Mm -hmm. well, I, I really don't want him to be, I don't want him to be in control of my life. I want to make my own decisions. I want to be my own man. And you're probably not a Christian. you got to be in the dark. You have to ask yourself some hard questions. Because the gospel is Savior and Lord. It's not just Savior. All I can say is it sounds like you're not a Christian because there's no joy, there's no praise, there's no thanksgiving. Then I say, you got to ask yourself. And I like to use the idea of you know, go home, get in the dark, just between you and Jesus, and ask him, did I really accept you as my Savior or just my fire insurance? The church is full of people that like the fire insurance, but don't like the authority. They don't like the idea of, I'm a slave, and I get up in the morning and ask the Lord, boss, what do you want me to do today? No, we get up in the morning and say, this is what I want to do today, bless me. Yeah. That's not lordship.
That's where you want fire insurance and you want a good luck charm. And then we present that to people without judging them. And then we have the command. You have to respond to the gospel. You have to decide that Jesus is your Lord. You have to take up your cross daily and follow him. Because ultimately you stand in front of them by yourself. And I can't do any of those things for you. I can't accept Christ for you. I can't present the Lord for you. I can't carry your cross. It's between Jesus and you. It's not between you and your pastor or you and me or you and anybody. It's you got to get in the dark and say, have I accepted the offering for me? I can't accept it for my son or my daughter or my husband or whatever. I, all I can do is pray that the Holy Spirit would bring them to an, a knowledge of the Lord personally. I can't accept for them. So from a teaching aspect, we can just say the doctrine of salvation. And if you go to my video under systematic theology, the doctrine of salvation, I talk about eternal security. Okay. Because I'll check that one out. So the idea of I can judge your actions. I can say what you're doing doesn't look Christian, sister. But I can't say because of those actions, you're not a Christian. Gotcha. You've lost it. I can't do that. I can't judge the heart. I can judge the actions. And we're supposed to. But if I see somebody who's who go, comes to church, but he's living a debauched life, and there are people that are doing that, then... I go and say, hey, let's look at the doctrine of salvation. What does it mean to be saved? Because they may not even realize that it means more. They have met, they may have been told, Jesus is your fire insurance. You take care of that, it's all over. That's all you need. There are churches that teach that. But that's not what the Bible says. That's right. That's, there's a fine line there and saying, I can't tell if you're a Christian. I, all I can tell is I'm a Christian. Where we run into trouble is when we're looking at other people and we're trying to decide if they were a Christian once and now they're not a Christian. Yeah. But we, that's not the point. The point is for me to decide, did I accept Christ? We've been talking about this confidence in our salvation, and I wanted to recommend a video to you that you might enjoy. It's called, What Does Salvation Mean? It's a great video about the entire doctrine of salvation, and you should give it a try, and hope you will enjoy it. We're going to continue in our normal Bible studies as we go along. Our Bible studies are in series, so be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we do a new video, including a one-off like this one, just between friends. And we'll see you next time. Until then, God bless you.